I don't know if anyone else has noticed this, but 2024 is actually an incredible year for gaming. Say, sat on a sofa in a game that came out in 2018, but it's better than a black screen, okay. And I kind of wanted to talk about that fact because I really didn't think anything could really beat 2023 for me. In fact, I think that 2023 is going to go down in uh, the lines of, like, 2004, which was, let's be honest, an absolute cracker when it comes uh, to games. You got the original Far Cry, Half-Life 2, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, The Chronicles of Goddamn Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay! I'm just getting started, Hexy. That is right, Riddick. Set it free. Sorry, I realize, I realize a lot of you might not have heard or played that one. It's actually an incredible game, and it's one of my personal favorites, and it really never got the attention it deserves, so here's my little shout-out to it. Sims 2, Spider-Man 2, basically, it is, you know, one of the years that we all know about. And I think it's pretty easy to argue that there has been a fair amount of those years in uh, the, well, 20 that followed. 2013, giving us GTA V, The Last of Us, Bioshock Infinite, Final Fantasy XIV is another solid example. But I think it is definitely fair to argue that 2023 is another one. With uh, Baldur's Gate 3, of course, which has rightly gone down as one of the best and most successful video games of all time, carrying the headline, there certainly was no slack behind it with Tears of the Kingdom, and on Wake 2, even Starfield, for those that did enjoy it, not for me personally, and even Diablo 4, like, a lot of stuff went down. But looking at it, I feel like 2024 is almost ready to be the same. Of course, 2022 had Elden Ring, but I don't think by itself it was enough to make it one of the years. I think it lacked the right supporting cast, even though personally, with Monster Hunter Rise joining it, it forever will be for me. But I think this year might be one of those times where we get those years back to back to back. Because I was kind of looking through all of the games that I'm interested in this year, things we've covered on the channel, things I still want to talk about, and realized the list is kind of ridiculous, like insanely so. We have, of course, what I think is fair to say, the headliner in Shadow of the Earth Tree, the Elden Ring expansion. That might be what tips it over the edge. But even then, I said, have you realized how good of a year this is for gaming, not just games? Because how can I have this talk and not mention, you know, Power World, which certainly is not Game of the Year worthy. It's a ridiculous, silly, what are they doing? Clearly Pokemon ripoff, but who cares? Because most of its systems are better than actual Pokemon has been for years. Hilarious romp through a creature collecting and survival that we all had a blast with. But more than that, numerically, it became the second highest ever 2.1 million concurrently played game on Steam ever, which is hilarious given the context and certainly a page in video game history, and rightly so. We've then gone on to another absolutely smash success that no one expected to be this much of one in Helldivers 2. And sweet liberty does that game also deserve the attention it's getting because it is hilarious fun. I think there is a certain section of that community that's, um, let's say, a little bit too far indoctrinated towards Super Earth, but for the most part, it's just a really good, fun horde shooter that you can really get behind with the silly world it's set in, what it's making fun of, and just enjoy blasting bugs and bots, and the support to the updates, the changes, there is likely going to be a whole third faction finally coming to it, I would assume, right, the Illuminate has to make an appearance, and it's been really, really good. It's also, again, had nearly half a million at its peak, but still maintains a solid 200k players on Steam, which is insane. Even got Final Fantasy VII Rebirth 2, and then Dragon's Dogma 2 came out swinging, which, yes, there was a lot of controversy surrounding it. There is a lot of quirks in that game, but it is undeniably special. It's undeniably unique. It offers an experience like nothing else. 
it's this weird amalgamation of systems that shouldn't work, that feel in some cases underbaked, that have problems, but the sum of its parts is so much greater than the whole that no one can really explain properly, but undeniably you feel it while exploring that world in one of the best games ever to really enjoy a journey and feel that every step you take matters. Then we uh, go on and get ourselves No Rest for the Wicked from Moon Studios, a beautiful ARPG Souls-like hybrid that, again, it's in early access. Changes will be made. They want our feedback and are getting it, are already making positive changes, but undeniably, it is one of the most creative visually experiences that has ever happened. It is this moving, dark, gothic painting, and it is a pleasure to be a part of, with incredible combat and the basis and potential for a genuinely, historically special game, and I'm very happy it's lived up to at least my hype. You also then got on a very different end of things, something like Manor Lords, which I also personally adore because I am an absolute sucker for both city building and management games, especially medieval ones, and Total War-esque battles, but on the smaller, more intimate scale they have in Manor Lords makes it just that much better to me. Seeing your individual peasants being able to track them from their jobs by their homestead out into the field, and if they die in battle, then you've lost them and their workflow, and it can really cripple you, and that attention to detail, how much everything matters and is born out, it's amazing. And that game is deserving every success it's getting too, and is also a Game of the Year contender, which to me, Dragonzongma 2 is, and No Rest for the Wicked in its final state, I have no doubt, will also be. And talking of early access, Hades 2 is going to release in early access this year. Hades 1 was phenomenal. I love roguelites, I love Greek mythology. This was a match made in Olympus for me. I really cannot get enough of it, and I cannot wait to have more to uh, jump into. We've already seen gameplay now, and it really is looking phenomenal, and is getting rave reviews. That, when it's finished, will no doubt, at least for me, be a Game of the Year contender, though that one, of course, for 2025, but hey, it's starting this year. Then you have the said headline and Shadow of the Erd Tree, which will no doubt dominate and, let's be honest, more than likely rightly so. The scope, scale, story, I mean, just more Elden Ring? You can't really say a better sentence to get more people excited than more Elden Ring. I can't wait to cover that, I can't wait to play through it with Cotton for you guys, I can't wait to live and breathe it for months, like I'm sure nearly every single person listening to these worlds also will do. But then it just keeps going. You've got something like Black Myth Wukong in August, a incredibly promising looking Souls-like that has a stellar theme and a stellar looking combat system that I can't wait to check out. And talking of stellar, there's plenty of solid supporting cast games as I call them, but I don't mean that in a kind of derogatory way. They're just never gonna grab the headlines like something like Elden Ring, but there's still little gems in their own right like Stella Blade which is a really fun little action adventure game that's certainly worth playing. Even something like Rise of the Ronin was very much the same too. Even got a couple little cute re-releases, like Monster Hunter Stories 1, which is a charming game, and I'm really glad it's being made playable again, and that's coming out in the summer, and anyone who likes Pokemon-esque games, but, you know, done with actual love and care and mechanics that work, is going to adore this, even if you're not a Monster Hunter fan. And then we have uh, Diablo 4, which initially wasn't going to get a mention here, but they have really turned it around. The recent PTR, the rework to nearly every system in the game, yeah, they have breathed new life into it, and it actually feels fun. It feels like the ARPG we waited so long for, and it's nice that it's finally going to release. It only took them, again, like a year. But that means the expansion, Vessel of Hatred, later on in the year, is actually now suddenly looking pretty exciting, and that's a big deal for 2024. But even on smaller scale updates of older games, it's something like Stardew Valley getting new major patches in 1.6, Baldur's Gate 3 still getting big patches, patch 7 is the uh, current one that is the big deal, so that's really exciting too. On a personal level, Little Nightmares 3, it looks like it's going to be a great time, I adored the first two, something like 
Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, which just got revealed and looks incredible. The first one was also incredible. A really solid medieval RPG. It just kind of keeps on going. There is a lot happening in 2024 gaming-wise, and the headliners are strong, and everything around them is also incredibly strong, and I would be surprised if anyone doesn't have at least, like, three to five games that they are really in love with this year that uh, they can really get behind us. Yeah, I wouldn't mind if any of them win at Game of the Year. And this is all kind of, again, the stuff in the first six months of the year. There's still the entire second half as things get release dates and actually come out and revealed, and basically... I'm quite excited for what's going on and what has been going on. I think there is a lot to do for all at tastes, and while, yes, every year does have a lot of this, it really just kind of struck me how much and how quality-wise 2024's offerings have been so far, and I just kind of wanted to express it, but more than that, get your guys' thoughts on it too. Which games have most appealed to you thusly? And which ones are you still yet looking forward to? And if you agree with my entire sentiment that 2024 is in line, if multiple games that haven't come out yet stick the landing to be one of those years in gaming, because I really do think it is the case. Obviously, next year will be, because Monster in the Wilds is coming out, and, you know, there could be literally no other releases the entire year, and it would be the best year ever for gaming, but, you know, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to that, but for right now, I am very content when it comes to what we have to keep us busy in 2024. So let me know your thoughts on all this, of course. And for now, like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again, a good bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is, uh, goodbye.